Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So, training camp is coming up, uh, and the, the channel has been. I shifted a little bit away from the Giants, but over recent days, you know, let's let's talk about Giants because I am pretty hyped about the season. Like it's almost it's about fifty days until the season starts. Just think about fifty days back. You, I, I should have thought about when that was. So I guess it's the twenty third day. So that was the beginning of June. So. Think back to the beginning of June, and that's how far we have to go to the beginning of the season. And uh, there have been a couple of interesting players on the physically unable to perform. Same thing goes with Leonard Williams last year. I thought he was horsing around with the contract. I was wrong about that. I thought he was horsing around and saying, you know, I, I want a contract, or I'm, I'm just going to say I'm not playing. I, that's what I thought he was going to do. They're like, oh, a hamstring tightness. Uh, but we don't see anything wrong. Yeah, but trust me, my body is feeling bad. But uh, yeah, so... I want to talk about the, the New York Giants and basically the players that are physically unable to perform list. Aaron Robinson, you know, maybe there's something there. O'Shane Zimenez, it's a little bit of a shocker. Like, I, I did put on his film and there's a place for him on the team. But, you know, he, he doesn't really have that like huge upside. He's a replaceable player. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's not, it's not like this huge thing. Like, to O'Shane Zimenez, who an Arizona Cardinals fan, it's not great. So there are a couple guys on the physically unable to perform list. Uh, we'll see. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is. Now, I kind of want to transition to that because that's been kind of a topic. He's been in the news with, like, Bitcoin. And he would, if he wasn't ready, you'd hear nothing from him, you know? You'd be, you'd, somebody would ask a question about Saquon Barkley and John Mayer would be like, uh. But we're hearing things, you're communicative, so that's a good little sign. Now, I was thinking, what would it mean for us to ease him in? Like, when you're playing, you're playing, you're, you're playing at 100%. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're going full speed. There's no like, oh, I'm going to maybe not make that cut. No, no. If you're playing, you're, you're going in there, you're performing. Unless it's like a playoff game or something, you know, and you don't really care if you do get injured. But you're not going to play to not get injured. You're playing to play. Now, there are obviously strategies to not get injured that the players are consistently taught, like um, you know, the way you fall and certain things. I think, I think that's taught. I think I heard that once. But, um, yeah, so Saquon Barkley, to ease him in. Get a couple of, um, you know, I think just don't play him the first week. But then the thing is, if you don't, there's going to be so much, like, animosity. Like, I think there'll be more animosity if he only gets five carries that game. Because, like, okay, what's wrong with him? The same thing with Ezekiel Elliott. He's con- consistently pulling himself in and back from games. I just, in my mind, say I'm not playing week one. And per- just prepare for week two, that Thursday night football uh, players are, are going to be, they're not going to be fresh, let's just say, for that game. So you're going to catch players a little bit slower. So you can ease yourself in a little bit. Now, what it mean is he's averaged 17 carries throughout his entire career. Uh, that means, you know, 12 times involving DeAndre Booker a little bit. Um, and I, I call, I'm sorry, I just got caught. Now, there are also rumors that our third running back, uh, running back Corey Clement could uh, get cut as well. That would be a surprise cut. And we'll get into a little bit of the surprise cuts later in the video. I think I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about that much in this video. It depends on, it depends on how things go kind of, but, uh, yeah. So if we took a look at Josh Jacobs career game logs, um, and he, he had John Deandre Booker. So the first couple weeks had 25 and 27 carries, but after that, we're looking at 16, 15, 10, 14. Like we're looking at a fairly low amount because he was battling with injuries throughout the year so i can see saquon having a career like this let's do a little bit of a profile project projection why am i expecting saquon barkley to give us because i've been talking about him for a lot uh so i'm expecting him to have a josh jacobs here he's gonna have well last year he had lowered he had 3.9 yards per attempt that's what our our running backs in 2011 averaged but i think he's going to be towards five or 4.4 yards per attempt um He's going to have around 250 attempts. This is assuming there's obviously the choice he gets in, uh, option he gets injured. He's going to around 275 attempts ish. So if you do if you do that uh, that quick math that I definitely had prepared for this video, and I'm definitely not eagerly searching on my phone for a calculator at this point, but uh, that math is easily just computing is uh, 16 carries per game. So yeah, you can you can see that right, 16 carries per game, uh, and then uh, at that point, if he has 275 carries. At that 4.4 average, that's that's 1,200 yards. Now, I take the under on that, just in general. But I think you're going to look at 1,200 yards. I think Kenny Galladay is going to um, force a lot of penalties in the red zone. Same thing with Kyle Rudolph because they're experienced that way. 
caused a couple penalties. I wish I would have got the stats for that. I need to there their stats for how many times you draw penalties for players, but I'm assuming that's going to happen a lot. And Saquon Barkley should be able to burst it in. So that may lower his amount of yards per attempt, per se, but it'll up his amount of touchdowns. So I think he's around eight touchdowns this year. I wouldn't, uh, he's not a first round fantasy guy for me. If I see him in the first round at uh, the 10th pick, I may get him, but I don't know, man. Saquon Barkley, uh, I think his load is going to be limited. And we're going to see a couple games based on the strat. Like if we're playing a defense like Washington has a pretty good secondary, we're just going to have him run. Because uh, you have more, you have better pat. Eh, now I'm thinking about it. I mean, you may want to pass more that game and have them out in the backfield. Like, but you know what I'm saying. Like the Denver Broncos, you're gonna run it more with the Broncos. Um, but I already say he's not gonna be playing when we play the Broncos. But uh, let's do the Falcons. Okay, they they they're bad all around. I don't know which I don't know what you want to give me. I think you guys catch the drift of what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, so Saquon Barkley, it's gonna be interesting. Those are my profile projections for him, and that was just kind of random. I had an idea, like I have notes just written down on my phone. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, and then eventually just the uh, things flow. I don't like anything too strict, but yeah. So now we can you gotta knock that one off of the things I want to talk about before the season. Uh, and yeah, here's the the headlines going into training camp. Here are what the headlines are gonna be. Uh, I just wrote a couple down that we're definitely going to see. Let me know what your headlines are going to be. Uh, so here are my headlines. Carter looks amazing. He's big. He's like, we can't believe he recovered this fast. It's amazing recovery. You know, that sort of thing. That's what you're going to hear for, for, from uh, Lorenzo Carter. He's primed to have a big year. We're talking about him and Ojolari. Um, you're not going to hear much coming out about Shane Lemieux. I don't really think we're going to hear a lot about like, the offensive lineman. Oh, he's getting better. Because I think the Giants are a little bit scared of him. Like they may like pump him up a little bit, but I really don't think we're hearing a lot about Shane Lemieux, Nick Gates. Um, but I think we're gonna hear a decent amount of like Andrew Thomas. Yeah, Andrew Thomas, you're gonna hear you're gonna hear a lot from him, being like, okay, like he's really he's trusting that ankle. He's doing great. He's you know him and Ojolari are going at it, and uh, him and Lorenzo like they're gonna throw it back from last year. Like him and Lorenzo are really you know uh, working together. Uh, former Georgia, were they ever teammates there? But they both played at Georgia. Yeah, that, that's going to be a little headline there. You're going to hear a bunch of Ojolari and Lorenzo Carter, old teammates, a bunch of that sort of thing. You know, the, the, we, used to be, we used to be roommates together. You have Tate Crowder, a bunch of Bulldogs. You're going to hear that. You're also going to hear Evan Ingram is hungry. Evan Ingram is in the best shape of his life. Evan Ingram looks really good. He hasn't dropped the pass. There's going to be like a drop counter. That's what we're going to see. Um, you know, a bunch of people are going to be high in Evan Ingram because uh, Kyle Rudolph is going to be injured and you're not really going to hear a lot from him. He's in the pup list. Um, the pup. I love the pup list. But, uh, yeah, you hear a lot from him. He's healthy. He's motivated. He's trying to put everything behind him. We've already seen some of that, but I think it's going to be amplified. Um, and, and as far as, like, the tiny things, like, on the raw, I don't think they're going to be that much. Um, Jones, you're going to also hear about Jones taking a leadership role. They're talking about, like, Jones, Arizona. That's going to be amped up. Like, oh, Jones is meeting with everyone after practice, making sure everyone's good. Him and Kenny Galladay, you're going to see a bunch of pictures of them together. That's what's going to happen. Um and uh, yeah, and then the defense, they're just gonna be, there's just gonna be a bunch of them like posing at pictures, like there'll be pass breakups. You see a bunch of them like just, just having fun, which I'm gonna really gonna like. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are, those are some headlines that I'm guaranteeing that are gonna be included in this year. Now let me know, let me know some of your headlines. Do you think, uh, let's see, what, what, what can I think of off the top of the noggin? You think they're gonna, there's gonna be Dexter Lawrence really hype? You think Leonard Williams is going to you know, steal a show? I know those older, like the veteran guys, they're not going to be too involved in training camp that much. They're not going to be like full, full on because you know, these guys are older. They know how to play. Just, you know, uh, get, in your, uh, get in your calls, get in get, get the gel well together, maybe implement that a little bit more in the preseason or something like that. Um, but yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.